Hello and welcome to Mtoto News Insights. My name is Omar Hamid. But first, let's have a look at the headlines. We are not just saying that young people should get um, access to contraceptives. Information is good. So you give information and then see uh, if they still want, because the information will make them know. Should I go ahead? Should I? Yeah. Women experienced barriers accessing sexual and reproductive health services when COVID-19 struck in 2020. A new report shows. We will tell you a story of girls who came up with the Corruption Detector app. Thank you so much and welcome. Women experienced barriers accessing sexual and reproductive health services when COVID-19 struck in 2020. 26% of women and girls from five countries could not access modern contraceptives when COVID-19 struck. A report released by the African Population and Health Research Center shows. The study, which took two years to research and compile targeting Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi and Uganda shows that girls and women from low-income homes in the five countries experienced barriers accessing sexual and reproductive health services when COVID-19 struck in 2020. On the 19th of May 2022, different organizations gathered at the Sarova Stanley Hotel to launch the official report on the impact of COVID-19 on young adolescents and teenagers. Different topics such as the use of contraceptives were raised. We are not just saying that young people should get um, access to contraceptives. Information is good. So you give information and then see uh, if they still want, because the information will make them know. Should I go ahead? Should I? Yeah. So for me, I believe that. You give information, then the services is there. If you insist that I, I do this, because I remember I, I did some research in uh, Thika, and after talking to a young, very young child, I think was nine years old, who said that could not talk in front of the, the parents, because she was sexually active. So you can imagine if she's telling you, I want to, yeah, what would you do? Interestingly, this what this research has shown for COVID-19 is the fact that when it came to uh, the pandemic, the first thing that went was access to reproductive health and rights, especially for the most vulnerable. So when I say the most vulnerable, it's not just women, but young people, both male and female. They're the, they're the ones who often the health system is not designed to meet their needs. One of the reasons is because a lot of the healthcare workers go in with an attitude of, I'm a mother, I'm a father. So when I see my son or my daughter coming in to ask for a condom, or to ask for contraception, I can't imagine that they're sexually active. So I get annoyed and, you know, I, I may try to appear to be ob objective, but my attitude, my comfort level, being able to speak to young people without having to be paternalistic. And so what this research, what this research showed is young people are the most affected, the ones who tended not to want to go to services, which they never used to attend anyway, because the services were not friendly. So we saw a 25% reduction and about 16% of young people decided not even to go to health facilities at all. Now the outcome of this was for those who needed a contraceptive method, many of them got pregnant. You saw from data that came out recently, teen pregnancy rates during this period, close to 14,000 teenagers got pregnant during that period. These are people, this is something that could have been avoided if you had provided them access to information. Right from the family level, parents, the community, and healthcare workers. So we failed them. Now it's our singular honor to declare this report officially launched. Clap for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As the official launch of the report on the impact of COVID-19 on sexual and reproductive health uh, done in five countries, Kenya included, we can only hope that the recommendations done in this forum at the Sarova Stanley to be taken by the government to ensure that each and every single young person and adolescent get to know about their sexual reproductive health. Reporting from Toto News, my name is Omar Hamed. 
This story forms the basis of our, of our discussion today on access of contraceptives and menstrual health among young girls and menstrual hygiene among young girls. Should young girls be given access to contraceptives to prevent early pregnancies and STIs? Now on to other news. We will tell you the story of girls who came up with a corruption detector app. Disgusted by runaway corruption in the country, five girls decided to do something about it. The app includes a geo map that highlights the most corrupt areas in the city. Users can report corruption, naming the location and government departments involved. The Nairobi Tech Girls is basically um, a group of five girls, that's us, uh, <laughs> who have coded an app to um, hopefully eradicate corruption in Nairobi and then eventually Kenya. Um, so basically the app has three major features. Um, it has an education page to empower Kenyan citizens and give them the opportunity to um, learn more about um, the corruption and what's going, ar what's going on around them in their community. Um, also, we have a reporting function so Kenyan citizens can find their voice and report the corruption going around them so they don't feel like they have no voice in the situation. And with these reports and all the data that we gather, we will then rank um, the government departments, like the police station, um, et cetera, on how corrupt they may be. And this will hopefully spread awareness on um, which departments are corrupt and which departments are um, clean. So we also have a geomap which highlights or pinpoints any areas of corruption around you. It basically gathers all the reports and shows you the locations of the reports and which location has the most corruption. So we kept going during quarantine because we wanted to prove that sometimes you just don't have to sit down and wait for things to be released by other people. You can do it yourself. You Sometimes people say that um, boys usually do the coding and boys usually do the technology, but we've, we found, we showed that girls can do it too and that we have power to do it. There is, I think, a few awards that you could win. And then the one that we won um, in Technovation Girls was uh, the Social Impact Award. And I mean, I just, I think that's amazing because that was like the whole point of our app was to make a social impact on our community and to spread awareness on this problem. I feel like um, once you have a group of amazing people to work with and um, amazing mentors too, you can do anything. Yeah, there were a lot of late nights. Mm -hmm. um, virtual meetings were hard, but there was always someone who had a good day and was making jokes, encouraging everyone else. We did have to keep going and be resilient, but in the end, it really paid off. It made such a huge impact, and now we're like really, really proud of what we have done. At this juncture, we take a break, but don't go too far. We still have that discussion on menstrual hygiene and reproductive sexual health on young teenagers and also the use of contraceptives by young adolescents. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Mtoto News Insights. Before we took a break, I had highlighted on the topic that we are to discuss today. Earlier on in the week, a report was launched uh, uh, on the impact of COVID-19 on the sexual and reproductive health on teens and adolescents. And today we are talking about things like the use of contraceptives. So today I have my panel. I'm going to let them to introduce themselves before we start the discussion. I'll start with you. My name is Doreen Kakai, Deputy Chairperson at Kebra Sub County. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, my name is Brian King, uh, current Eastern African representative for Parkland. Thank you so much. I'm Daisy Njoroge, speaker in Jerusalem County. Yeah, so basically we have KCA people here, Kenya Children's Assembly, and yeah. also the representative of East Africa, Parkland. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, Doreen. Yes, please. Let's start with the, um, with the topic, like, do you know what contraceptives are? Okay, so 
Not really. Mm, not really. Yes. As a young person, okay. Yes, Brian. Do you know what <laughs> contraceptives are? <laughs> yes, I am aware of some certain contraceptive and also contraceptive issues. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Daisy. Yeah. Do you know what contraceptives are? No, we just had them, but no. Nope. Not really. Okay, so contraceptives are uh, different. Um, I don't want to say tools, <laughs> but different methods of birth control. Things like um, uh, I know we are all adole um, Okay, you're all adolescents, India. So you guys have had things like condoms, right? You've had things like uh, it's been going around, but things like P 2s that people use so that they can prevent um, early pregnancy. Like okay, not early pregnancies to prevent pregnancies. So. I'm going to start. Uh, let me start with you, Daisy. Now, as you, as a, as a girl, now, um, I've, I've told you, contraceptives are things like condoms, P 2s that prevent pregnancy from, you know. So, as a, according to you, to young people, should young people get things like contraceptives? Because we saw numbers that uh, rose during COVID nineteen, uh, early pregnancies were all over. Do you think young people should use contraceptives to prevent uh, teen pregnancies? Um, for me, no. And first of all, it should be out of their reach, because. Mm -hmm you're too young first of all you're too young to get pregnant mm. so the need of using a contraceptive is out of discussion because as a child pregnancy is not a, an issue to discuss about as as a young teenager you can't getting pregnant earlier in the christian way it's committing fornication yeah okay so brian i'm going to come to you now according to you do you think the use of contraceptives, things like P2s for girls maybe, or things like condoms, can help prevent things like teen pregnancies, early teen pregnancies? You saw the numbers, I'm sure you saw the numbers, how they rose during COVID-19, and on the report, they were showing the impact and the findings. What do you think? <coughs> well, first of all, I would like to differ from from her opinion. I totally understand it, but I'd like to differ. And yes, I agree. I would like to agree that contraceptive actually help to reduce the number of pregnancies. Okay. But I guess Omar kind of introduced the topic in a one-sided way. Because when you're talking about contraceptives, most people are only aware of methods like the P2 condoms and such, okay? But we can also talk about contraceptive measures. Abstinence is a con uh, contraceptive measures. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the contraceptive measures, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think contraceptive and contraceptive measures do actually help to reduce the number of teenage pregnancies because as much as you might want to argue that abstinence is the best way, uh, we know of teens who are not abstaining mm -hmm. and so in order for in order for us to prevent them actually you know just ending their lives abruptly mm -hmm. uh, leaving school STDs and such we need to actually start uh, talking about contraceptives and actually just providing contraceptives thank you so much Brian for that I'm coming to you Doreen Doreen now um, uh, there's this aspect of uh, sexual education mm -hmm. sex education to be introduced in school you as um as a young person also as a representative in your place do you feel like it's necessary that children get sex education okay thank you to me yes because if a child is educated to why they should abstain from sex then they will just know that this is not good and they will get the education that i'm not supposed to do such a thing mm -hmm. and if they get awareness then they are not they are not gonna go outside there mm -hmm. and try to do something that is not of their age mm -hmm. yes and thank you so much doreen uh, let me come back to you daisy now daisy uh we have talked about uh Brian has talked about um, uh, contraceptives <coughs> being um okay for birth control right and there are different types of contraceptives kuna the the ones that are di okay i don't want to say digital but the modern ones and there's the traditional ones okay so do you feel like this will increase the number of premarital sex use of contraceptives um in one way it may and in another way it may not because like for the meds um you find that they are harmful to the kids so for them using it it causes a big problem to them because you may find later on they'll have a look at their future later on they may become barren mm -hmm. for the ladies the, for the girls they'll become barren maybe they may become barren later on mm -hmm. or even some other 
health issues that somebody <coughs> never had that came due to taking them because if you take something once you'll get addicted to it a lot of times mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Brian, you raised a really good <laughs> thing behind there. So, um, okay, you said that maybe the use of uh, contraceptives is good, right? Yeah. But, okay, let me put this, let me give you in this context. Um, if we now say that, uh, because they saw that uh, the, the numbers are showing are from children around 15, 16, 17, they were the ones who were getting pregnant more other than the other ones from the young age. So, if we go out there and then say um, we give or, or we tell this, uh, we talk to them and then we give them these contraceptives, don't you think it will increase the number of premarital sex? Okay, Omar, as I said before, we have contraceptives and actually contraceptive measures. Mm -hmm. And I agree with her. The first thing we need to do is actually talk about it, uh, to spread enough information about it. Try to destroy as many myths and misconceptions as possible, okay? Because I, I realize that there are a lot of myths when it comes to contraceptive and contraceptive measures. And that is why we tend to have, to have a lot of negativity towards it, okay? Sure, if we were just to give P2s and condoms to children, we might actually increase the rate of premarital sex. But if we are to give them these measures, teach them how to use them and why they should not use them at a certain age, we actually tend to, we might reduce the, the number of premarital sex. I think we might reduce it because, I mean, they know, they're empowered to know that even though we do have these things, we're not supposed to actually use them, okay? It's like... Uh, it's like what? It's like having a weapon, okay? Mm -hmm. It's good for you because it will help you defend yourself when you're attacked, right? But if you know how to use it properly, you will not end up attacking someone, right? Like we've watched the Kung Fu movies. We know when you're trained, you don't <laughs> go out attacking everyone, right? So I think it's the same way when it comes to the contraceptive measures. Mm -hmm. If you are taught on how to use them and why you should not use them, you end up being more vigilant around yourself. Mm -hmm. You end up knowing that I'm not supposed to be used this, but just in case, okay? Because we are adolescents and a lot of, a lot of things do happen, okay? You know that I can use a condom, I can have a P2 and it can help me, you know, not get STIs, mm -hmm. not get STDs, not infect my partner, that is if I'm positive, mm -hmm. HIV, um, and not actually get pregnant as a teenage girl, okay? Because, I mean, premarital sex has already happened. As she said, fornication. A lot of children are fornicating, Omar. We cannot say, <laughs> we cannot turn a blind eye and say it's not happening. It is happening, okay? So what do we do about it? We spread information yeah. and we teach them how to not... Uh, get pregnant, okay. Yes. Yeah. Use these measures, okay. And I had Daisy say that uh, it's it might have some long term negative effects. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to realize that uh, if you are educated, if you're given a medical procedure like the P2, mm -hmm. I'll do some research on it. But I do know that they do not have any long term negative effects on the girl or the lady using them, okay. Yeah. And but all in all, uh, abstinence is the best way to avoid premarital sex. Yeah. <laughs> After yeah, all, not doing it is the best way of not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. And with uh, Brian's uh, thought there, or uh, words, uh, beautiful words, <laughs> we are taking a short break here at Mtoto News, but stay tuned, we'll be back with the discussion. Welcome back to Mtoto News Insights. Before we took a break, I told you we'll continue with the conversation, and here we are. So I'm going to throw a question at each and every one of you. So I'm going to start with you, Doreen. Mm -hmm. uh, Doreen, have you ever used any form of contraception? No. Do you have friends who have used uh, contraceptives? Not. Anyone? Who you know has used contraceptives? Yes. Who? Who exactly? Like Just tell us a little bit about it. My elder sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... My cousins, my elder cousins, mm -hmm. yeah. What form of contraceptive are they, have they used? I don't know. You have no idea? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me come back. Let me, let me come to you, Brian. Brian, you are uh, 17 years old, right? Yeah. That's almost the legal age, Cindy. Yes. Have you ever used any form of contraceptive? Uh, me personally, no. <laughs> Kijana, don't like <laughs> I say no, it's no. Okay, do you know anyone, any of your friends? Well, I know you, but I don't think I have any other friends who have used, mm -hmm. at least who have spoken openly about using contraceptives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem, speaking openly mm -hmm. about using about contraceptives. Using yeah, there's a lot of negativity and, you yeah. know, embarrassment in using them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think I've had any of my friends speak about it. What so. about anyone at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. There, there are a lot of people who I know are using contraceptives, mm -hmm. who are on contraceptives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us more about it. 
more about what exactly <laughs> <laughs> about the people okay the, i know they're using contraceptives i know they're using family planning measures to um plan their family basically uh know how many kids they want uh not trans transmit you know mm. stis mm. because i do know that in some contraceptive measures like the use of condoms actually you know uh, okay. prevent okay. stis okay. prevent stis because one of my panelists here that's uh, mm. if contraceptive measures actually do help prevent stis so yeah daisy yes have you ever used any form of contraceptive no we are ranging from modern to traditional so you can pick any <laughs> none of them none listed. Of, uh, friends maybe uh, you are in high school yeah. i know some in high i don't want to say high schools are bad but i know in high schools things happen yeah in high school things happen mm -hmm. but for me i've not i've not like come across as brenna said that negativity and embarrassment mm. so like speaking about that thing in like in a congregation if you speak about it you'll be talk of town mm -hmm. so you just keep it to yourself so for me I don't know about anyone, but if they're out there, they mm -hmm. know themselves. They know themselves. You know yourself. Thank you so much for that. On the 28th of May is Menstrual Hygiene Day uh, worldwide. So I'm going to throw a question to you, most, uh, Brian. Let me start with you. You have a sister, right? Yes, yeah. Do you talk about menstruation with her, maybe? Uh, I would, I would like to say no. <laughs> <laughs> How do you start the, intro, the topic? Eh? Hello, do you menstruate? Okay, no, no, no. I, I know it's not like that, but don't you think you should know about these things now? I actually, I, I think we should know about them, and I think we should be able to talk about them, right? Mm -hmm. It's about the reproductive health of our sisters, mm -hmm. right? It's natural and it's normal. No one should be ashamed of speaking about it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of mm, sh male chauvinism yeah. that, 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 that surrounds this topic, okay? And it's just, it's covered. Let's hope we can, you know, just uncover it slowly by slowly, yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. Doreen. Um, I don't, um, I don't want to put it in the perspective of if you are there or you're not yet there. But do you ever talk about things like menstruation openly? A lot. A lot? Yes. I love it. T -t -t tell us more. Especially <laughs> in school mm -hmm. because we usually have a debate. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me not call it a debate, mm -hmm. but just a, a conversation mm -hmm. between girls mm -hmm. in the school. And so we just talk about these things and how we how we're supposed to go about it. and what we should do and what we should not do mm. and it's really not something that i can say it is a shaming or something like that because to me communication is the most important thing so if i get to know something that i did not know it helps me to adjust my mm. what I, to adjust myself okay Doreen, just a minute are you in any way in a girl's school yes uh, so it's a completely girls school. not actually it's it's a mixed school yeah. right and it's it, the talk is only for girls somehow do you also involve the boys yeah because we, i know i understand in our primary school we uh, may god forgive us but we used to make a lot of fun for girls when they you are giving give, being given those stuff so yeah. do you guys like talk to the boys and then tell them like this is a normal thing and yeah, stuff? do you involve them in those talks yeah because even when we go there to get the pads they do not ask questions or they are re really good. They never bother us. They just, they understand. Mm -hmm. And th that's because we are involving them. Even when you learn science in, mm. in classics, it's, we don't say at the boys, stay away. We, are, we want to learn this topic, right? See, we just do it as a class. Yeah, as a class. Yes. Yeah, Santis. It means we're moving on as, a, as children of Kenya. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Daisy, yep. do you ever talk about uh, things like uh, menstruation, the use of pads openly? Yeah, for me, in primary, I found it, like, in the primary school in which I was in, a mixed one, in fact, because most primary schools are mixed, you'll find it not something you could discuss about, because, mm. like, let's say, when girls are given pads in school, mm. You'll find boys can even sneak into girls' bags and take them and like just what? play with them in class. <laughs> okay, so it was <laughs> like never a point of like discussion in class. But whenever you have this chance for like life skills, mm. that's where you could discuss it as a class. But there's a way boys took it as a not a good thing and like a funny thing. So like if you'll find let's say a girl is in like let's say class five and she has started them already, she'll be the talk of the school. Mm. Because 
first of all it will seem shocking to them but for us we know it's normal yeah. but for like with the boys in school they see it like it's something mm. it's, it's, you've grown old too fast yeah it looks yeah. quite weird yeah. but like right now in high school you'll find you have a like a girl school mm. like the one in which i mean you'll find the discussion is more open because you'll engage yourselves and you have a, a female class teacher so even let's say like during your life skill lesson or you like have a free lesson you discuss about those things so you even learn more like how she say it if you don't know something you get to know something else like you you learn a lot from yeah. it yeah. yeah well thank you so much yes brian now uh, i'm coming to you do you now we have talked in the perspective of the boys making fun and even stealing the pads who does that <laughs> why? <laughs> why anyway the boys stealing the pads now what can you say about sex education itself being included as part of the curriculum in schools oh thank you so much Omar. Uh, because uh, let me just say something first of all when it comes to menstrual health i, I think for me personally why because i think i was and then unfortunately, unfortunately i was one of those boys who are making fun and i think it's because i was taught what it is and why it happens but i was not told that it's supposed to happen and it's normal and it's not a bad thing you see yeah. mm -hmm. as in our curriculum only covers what it is and why it happens mm -hmm. it doesn't cover it's a normal thing it doesn't cover it's part of growth and development okay so i think we should involve that in our curriculum now when it comes to it's sex there. education it's there yeah okay personally for me i guess it wasn't you didn't do CBC, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess that's well, the point it's not the cbc it's, eight, four, four system. Yeah. it's still the same system yes uh, okay yes, we were sleeping. i remember our teacher was like this um we it, i think it was in class six that is the, that is where you learn yeah. about science no. And our teacher was like, yeah, menstruation happens. He was a man. So he was also quite sensitive about the topic. He was like, ah, the ladies will ask, let's move on. He did that. <laughs> you see, so for us, it was something we should not talk about. I mean, the teacher was not ready to talk about it. So, yeah. So us, our teacher, he did this. He, yeah, the laughing thing was there. And he just left the boys laugh. Like, yeah, you can laugh about it. But at the end of the day, you need to know about this. It's, it's a lady. It's a lady or a man. It's a man. It's a man. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're evolving. <laughs> so if you... For the better, yeah. Yeah, if you... The, like, you need to to know about it as much as you're gonna laugh or do whatever, but you just need to get the information. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. commonly, in high school, biology is taught by men. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, but yeah, teacher was also biology about... Biology is taught by men in high school. Because it, engage, it engages them more to showing us, like in a girl's school, showing us that 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 when he was a boy, he learned about it and got interest of knowing more about it. Mm. So you find that they are the ones teaching biology in high school. Okay, so um, uh, we have come to the end of the program, but I'm going to throw a question to each and every single one of you. You answer in like 20 seconds. Uh, I want you to give me your parting shot about sexual and reproductive health. Like, just give me your general comment and tell me if you think contraceptives are good or bad. I'm going to start with you. Daisy. Um, in one way they are good, the contraceptives in one way they are good, and in another way they are bad, because as I had earlier said, they can cause health issues mm. in a bad way, okay. and in a good way, mm. it helps you to abstain from like the sickness and yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much daisy brian uh for me personally i represent a lot of children not just boys children in general boys and girls so i think uh, as an adolescent myself i would love for contraceptives to be introduced Con not just contraceptives omar mm -hmm. contraceptive and contraceptive measures thank you. okay the learning bit not just the tools as you said them okay give me the tools and teach me how to use them <laughs> yeah thank you so much brian yes doreen to me i will say no because <laughs> what makes me a child mm. and what makes my mom a mother or an adult mm. so if i may say i you they introduce those contraceptives like i won't be like a child you won't be here yeah <laughs> and it makes that what makes us different it's because i am a child mm. i need to abstain that is the the most powerful weapon you have and that's the only powerful weapon you have as a child and then when you are like maybe 18 and above age that is where the contraceptives should be mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. but if i say i use um I, me I, me as a child i use them it's not actually that i'm saying they are bad but what if now they this more immoral more immorality immorality mm -hmm. it will be high and these things like pornography and this stuff will be 
too much to handle mm -hmm. in our society. Well, thank you so much, Doreen. That's according to Doreen. Actually, Doreen, you've summed it up well. Um, uh, we, we as children, we have a responsibility to ensure that uh, we protect ourselves. We stay away from things that do not concern us. Actually, at the age before 18, we okay. We, we can we actually should talk about this, but let's focus more on our education. But I also do propose we get things like this education so that we can get to know about these things at an early age. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you can keep the conversation flowing at our social media platforms at Mtoto News, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Can, and you can also find me at all social media platforms at Omar Hamid 83. Uh, this program airs every Saturday at 8 p.m. on Look Up TV and airs every Sunday at 8 p.m. on Mtoto News YouTube channel. For now, we say goodbye.